There's no doubt in my mind if you spent any time playing Escape from Tarkov, you've definitely seen some evidence of cultists' existence. These markings can be found all throughout different maps, but the truth is the cultists themselves are actually quite misunderstood. These pagan worshippers carry some extremely rare loot, but are also very hard to kill. So let's jump into how to kill them so you can take down these sneaky boys easily and walk out with some insane loot. But before we get into the video here today, I do want to remind you that I do stream on Twitch and all the footage here today fighting the cultists was actually filmed live on my Twitch. So feel free to swing by, the link for that will be featured down below. Cultists are a reclusive group dedicated to worshipping the Mark Gods. You may have seen their markings around their sacrifice areas in some of the maps across Tarkov. Caught roaming in the dead of the night, their group is made up of warriors called Sectant and a priest called Drek. This group can number anywhere between 3 to 6 in total, however there will always only be one priest. They are always wearing full black clothing and sporting some masks like the Pestily Plague Mask and others like the GP5 and also the Slender Face Mask. They are extremely hard to kill as they come packing with their whopping 850 hit points, which is actually super close to the amount of HP that Killer has. On top of this, they use a wide variety of armor, from packers all the way up to a hex grid. The most common armor I've noticed for the Warriors is the level 5 between the Defenders and a lot of Korans. The biggest strength besides stealth is the wide variety of guns and knives they use. These include AKMs, SVDs, VALs, SR25, SKSs and other powerful guns. The ammo they run is why they are so dangerous. They commonly run 9x19 RIP, M62, SMB, 7N31 and 7N39 at Golnik to name a couple. However, there's still a rare chance for them to run weaker ammo such as Quakemaker, Luger CCI, 545BP, T and BT. But don't think just because they're running these ammos that they're not going to be able to kill you quickly. Remember, it is Tarkov AI and they will drop you in a heartbeat regardless. So you might be asking, why would I want to face these insane ammos and get two tapped? The truth is they have a lot of awesome items that spawn in their pockets that can make it really rewarding to kill them. They can actually spawn with the blue, green and black key cards, as well as other rare keys like Customs Mark Key and other keys like Emricon. The pockets of the main priest Shrek are actually more likely to spawn rare items, such as one item that I made a video on recently called the SJ9 Thermal Stim. If you guys want to know a little bit more about this stim, I actually made a recent video which I'll link in the top right corner. You should definitely check it out about this extremely rare and expensive stim. Some warriors, however, will always be using a cultist knife. This is a poison blade that can apply a toxin called the unknown toxin which causes you to take gradual damage over time and causes pain. The toxin can actually be cured by the antidote XTG12 or Augmentin antibiotic pills. Trying to outheal this poison will probably end in death unless you make your way to extract as fast as possible. Trust me, I've tried and luckily enough, I managed to burn through over five different med kits and barely made it out. A lot of people aren't aware that cultists can also be carrying an extremely rare and expensive melee weapon called the UVSR Tiger 1. The Tiger is worth a ludicrous amount of money on the flea due to the fact that it's extremely rare and it also has the highest stab damage out of any melee in the game currently. The Warriors will also be wearing bags occasionally that will be filled to the brim with random technical loot. This can list from propane tanks, fuel conditioners and other items like dry fuel which can fetch really good money earlier in a wipe. So enough about what they use and carry, when and where do they spawn? A good majority of the Tarkov player base aren't even aware that cultists exist. This is mainly due to the fact that they are extremely difficult to find. Currently, they only spawn in raids that are between the time of 10pm to 6am. It is possible for them to spawn even if you started the raid before their spawn time, if the time moved into their time zone while you're in raid. There are currently only 4 maps that feature their markings and evidence of their existence. Some of these ritual sites that I talked about earlier, except cultists can only be found on 3 of them. Custom Shoreline and Woods. They currently do not spawn on reserve despite having the most ritual sites out of any of the maps. I'm not sure this is intentional or simply an oversight. 
If it is, I don't doubt BSG will add them in the future. But just because you're on one of the maps and in the time zone that they spawn doesn't mean they're guaranteed to be there. Just like other bosses and AI in Tarkov, they still have a spawn chance. Currently, Shoreline and Woods have the highest spawn chance at a 28% chance, and Customs, the lowest out of all the maps, at 20. Though at times it may seem that they are not in your raid, there are still multiple chances in different areas of the map for them to catch you off guard. This is because cultists do not have predictable static spawns like other scout bosses in AI. Killer, for an example, as I showed in my killer guide, will stand in front of Kiba, pivoting on his spawn point when not aggroed, and rarely moves from this point unless he has reason to. Cultists, however, are not as easy to predict. This is because they can be scattered throughout a huge area, sometimes spanning over 200 meters around different marked locations. So what are these locations? Let's start off with Woods with a 28% chance to spawn, and in my opinion is the easiest map to check for cultists. There are two areas on Woods where they can spawn. The first is Sunken Village. This is the village to the northeast of the map with a lake and a bunch of collapsed cottages. They could be hiding anywhere on the entire side of the village closest to the mountain. Their spawn starts at the first house closest to Scab Bridge and extends to the houses closer to the church in the lake. They can be anywhere near any of these houses prone in the grass and they love to hang out in the bushes close by the boathouse which is near the lake. The second spot on woods is near Mark Circle and around Outpost. This area is one of the largest spawn areas which covers the most of the road near Outpost all the way up to the fallen tree towards the lumber mill. What makes this area even bigger is the fact that it extends past the Mark Circle on the other side of the road and they've known to be behind Outpost in some of the bushes nearby. In my experience, however, they are more commonly on the other side of the road near Mark Circle and love the bushes near there the most. Now, Shoreline also has a 28% spawn chance and also has two areas where they can spawn. The first is near what I call Spine, a ridge of rocks between the power station and the cottages where you fight Sanitar. They are always spread out and either in bushes or very close to one nearby. They like to split up on all sides of Spine, making it very hard to spot them. Some will be on the side facing the resort, and others on the side facing the water, and they can be scattered all throughout these rocks. Some players have also reported them being very close to the river, behind the power station, but it is less likely for them to be there. The other spawn on shoreline is closer to the northwest wall, near the swamp. There is a group of rocks with a couple large green crates. There is a decently large spawn zone surrounding this area, where they can spawn and aggro you. This is the rock that usually has one scav that patrols on your way out to tunnel. You probably know him because he's blacked your legs while you're running to resort. However, in all of my raids, this one seems to be the most rare, as I still haven't managed to get them to spawn here. Now, Customs actually has the lowest spawn chance at 20%. However, it has the largest area of possible spawns. This area starts from the Intel building and wraps all the way around the building itself. They can also spawn nearby at the truck warehouse in Elbow, which leads to that bronze pocket watch truck that you might have had to grab earlier in the wipe. They love to hang around in the bushes nearby this building, and they also love to spawn in the trench nearby. This trench is between Intel Building and Stronghold, and they love the bushes just nearby the trench itself. Continuing on their spawn zone, it extends to all sides of Stronghold. Essentially, 90% of the entire area all the way up to Old Gas Station and New Skeleton is their spawn zone. So you'd really need to be, if you are in a night raid, going around most of this area to try and get them to spawn. I did notice they have a special love for the back of ZB13, which is at the back of Stronghold, the entrance to one of the exits. A general rule of thumb, however, if you're looking for them on customs, you simply just need to check all of the bushy areas in the new expansion for them to spring out of the darkness. So now we know where their spawn zones are, but how do you actually know they're there? The truth is cultists are actually almost impossible to spot unless they've already been aggro. This is because they always stay laying prone in long grass and are near impossible to see with thermals. I've tried this with multiple thermals and the truth is when looking through bushes, their signature is so faint it's very hard to notice. There are some warning signs to look for that can indicate they're in an area however. A telltale sign that cultists are nearby is that there are no scavs alive or dead in areas around their ritual sites. 
A perfect example would be areas like Outpost and Mark Circle on Woods I would be on high alert if there were no scavs, where there are almost always some scavs. So however, on the rare occasion that they are together, they will not be fighting. The same rule applies to all the areas we talked about. This also applies to cultist and scout boss as they can actually coexist. I've personally been ambushed by cultists and then ran from them directly into Rishala at Stronghold and then managed to get shot at by both of them at the same time, which ended in lots of screams and then my inevitable death. But the truth is, if you do have a Rishala, there's still a chance that they will jump you at the back of Stronghold regardless, so just because scout boss is there doesn't mean the cultists are not. Okay, so you've got a feeling they're in your raid, you're in the right time and you're checking the right areas, but how do you kill them? Well, to get them out of the grass, you actually have to fish them out by stepping into their spawn zones. Now, 99% of the time, if they are there, they will start the engagement by running at you with their poison knife. Almost every cultist encounter I've had will start with an attempted stabbing. You will not hear them come up to you, however, as they do not make any footstep noise. If they do manage to stab you, or you return fire and manage to hit them or kill them, every other cultist will immediately become aggro and locked on. This lock-on is why they're so hard to fight. They remain unseen and can see you clear as day through multiple bushes in the pitch black. The worst mistake to try and make when fighting cultists is to try and take them head on. I've tried this a few times and every time I did, it ended in complete disaster. Sneaky fucking pricks. I'm like... <laughs> Their aim lock is similar to that at Gluha. Which is why when you start aggro, you need to slowly edge your way into their spawn and position yourself with enough cover, otherwise you will immediately die. An example would be avoiding the middle of the road near Sunken Village and sticking to the side closest to the water because then you have the defilade to hide behind if they are aggroed and they can't immediately see your head and then kill you. Now I could go into depth about the best way to approach their spawns on each one, but to save you time, I'm gonna give you guys a couple important tips to how to fight them effectively. The first and most important tip is you're not gonna be able to fight them head on. After a cultist has stabbed you and ran or died to your return spray, the best move is to immediately run. And no, that doesn't make you a rat, it just makes you smart. Generally running 100 plus meters away from where they are, situate yourself in a bush and scan the bushes and look for anything that stands out. What this does, it allows you to unlock their aggro towards you. The reason that this strat works so well is because after they lose aggro, cultists will only shoot at you if you shoot at them or come extremely close. After they've been aggroed the first time, they are no longer prone. They'll actually instead be crouched in individual bushes nearby. And for some strange reason, they continue to pivot constantly. Pivot! <laughs> This will actually make it easier for you to spot them. So after spotting one from range, the best move is to try for a clean headshot with a round that has 50 plus flesh to guarantee a kill, as they have crazy high thorax HP. I have noticed that generally in my raids, the most obvious thing about cultists is not just the pivoting, but it's their head, which actually stands out from the bush itself, especially if you do have some decent distance. An example would be, using the lake to your advantage at Sunken Village, because this gives you distance between them that's not technically in their spawn, but allows you to see them by the water's edge. You really need to land this shot, because if you don't, even if they're far away, they will all lock on immediately and light you up. After getting one kill, the best move is to then run and then reset again. Continue to do this until you can no longer spot any of them. After they're no longer visible from any angle that you try outside of their spawn zone, slowly work your way into their spawn zone from a favorable angle that has plenty of cover. Push up, but be super wary of stragglers hiding in bushes you couldn't see from range. But remember, there can be anywhere between three to six cultists at a time. So the best way to do this is kill one, run and reset, rinse and repeat. And the final tip in closing here is that bringing the right gear is part of success. An important part of being able to spot them is bringing the right night vision goggles. A good suggestion is the GNVPGs. These quad nods are expensive, but help a lot with being able to spot cultists just that tier above the others. I wouldn't actually go ahead and use the cheap NVGs because it makes the spotting strat near impossible. But if you have the confidence to run these and think you can still spot them anyway, go for it. Continuing on, you need to run a gun with good ammo. You're gonna need a round with 50 plus flesh damage to be able to one tap their heads. Some good suggestions are 7.62 by 39 BP, 
M61, M855A1, BS or 7N1. I suggest these types of ammos as the gun that fires them also has really good reach because you need to be able to shoot the cultists from range. Another important thing to choose when you're doing night raids is to have a scope that has the option between range and also CQC. Because it's nighttime, scopes without an illuminated reticle are a must. Scopes like the Valde PS130, the Elken DR1 Spectre and the Monstrum are actually a great choice for night raids as they have a painted reticle which allows you to keep sight picture and also gives you a decent amount of zoom with CQC options as well. Lastly, this tip is something that I sometimes forget to do, but it's really important. Always remember to bring more than one antidote XTG or augment and antibiotic pills. This is because it's possible to be poisoned more than once in a raid. Augmentin is cheaper, however, is a painkiller as well, so it does sharpen your vision, which can make it harder to see with night vision goggles. But if you are caught without any of these antidotes, you're in for a very bad time. Drinking milk as well will also boost your immunity, which makes the likelihood of being poisoned by a stab less likely, but will not remove the toxin. Hey guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully some of these tips and tricks helped you understand cultists just that little bit better. Cultists are actually just one of the hardest AI to beat in Tarkov, so hopefully this video helped you understand how to tackle them and claim some of that insane loot. If you've killed the cultists recently and got some crazy loot from them, let me know what you got in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. If you didn't, hit that dislike. If there's a particular boss you'd like to see me cover next, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.